people find you typically online? A lot of them do, yes. And um, I, I know in a previous converse, conversation you said that that tends to be the way because these tend to be personal issues. Maybe they don't want to talk to a friend about. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then how does it work? There's the intake form. Is that something they do online or they, they make an inquiry online? You call them back, you do the intake. So what, a lot of times people may be like at 11 o'clock at night, they may be, you know, before they've told anyone, they're just yeah. kind of noodling around the idea of what does separation look like? What does divorce look like? Um, how would I go about doing that? How do I start? Right. And they may be on page, you know, 972 of the textbook, and the other partner might be on page zero, not even knowing that this could be happening. Right. And so I will often, you know, get an email at 11:30 or, or midnight saying, "Hey, I went online and I looked at your website. What's the next step?" Right. And so that's when I will set a time to have a phone call with that person, confidential phone right. call, no charge. Right. And. Um, I will you know, ask them to look at my website, I'll tell them all about mediation, and then I'll say, you know, I really want you to ask all the questions that you have. So that's what we, we call the no charge phone consult. Right. After that, the other person will call me. Mm -hmm. I never push, I just say, when the other person wants to call me, have that other person call me, because the two parties are often um, not in the same place. Right. And at some point, probably after I've talked to the second person, I'll send them intake forms. Okay. Which are really more for them than for me. Because the questions are, what are your fears? What are your challenges? And it gets them thinking about what their goals are for mediation. Right. It also gives me their contact information, and it gives me some information, but it's really more yeah. for them than for me. Right. And then for me, also, I can screen for you know whether there's any physical abuse, emotional abuse, if um, drinking or drugs are an issue, and things right. like that. So it's a little bit of a screening mechanism for me as well. Right. So then they send, they fill out the intake forms, and they email them back to me. And I take a look at them, and we set up the first meeting, the first face-to-face -face meeting. Right. And then at some point, if it's a divorce, I send them divorce financial worksheets. Okay. Which they fill out, which which gives each of them a financial snapshot, because a, a big cornerstone of mediation is disclosure to mm -hmm. each other. Confidentiality right. and disclosure. Right. Everything we talk about in mediation is confidential. Right. And they've also promised that they're going to disclose everything to each other and not hide. Right. Hide things, not hide assets. Right. Not hide financial assets and liabilities. Right. So that's another form. So we've got the intake form, we've got the agreement to mediate, which explains what mediation is, right. what they do in the first session, and then we've got the financial worksheets. Okay. And then sometimes I'll give them homework assignments after each session oh, really? as well. Mm -hmm. And I always say, you know, do what you can without the mediator. Right. And that's what we call kitchen table negotiation. Yeah. And I'll say, save me for the hard stuff. And a lot of times people will say, well, we want you for everything. <laughs> and, and I'll say, fine. And then sometimes people say, thank you, we appreciate that. We'll do the the stuff we can do on our own, and then we'll call you in for the stuff where we really want the neutral. So how long, like, how long does mediation, is it like a one-time thing? Does it usually take like certain number of times, or does it completely vary depending on the issue? Good question. So in a regular mediation, maybe a small claims mediation, right? let's say it was um, a dispute over security deposit between landlord and tenant, mm -hmm. that should be one session. Right. In a family matter, often we do two-hour sessions. We get a lot done in two hours. Right. And after two hours of focusing intently on each other, people are pretty exhausted. Right. And so we do multiple two-hour sessions with family cases. Okay. Whereas a small claims case would be one session. Right. For a dispute like a business partner dispute, mm -hmm. in some ways that can be like a marriage breaking up because right. the partner's need to address a lot of emotions mm -hmm. with regard to how they work to e with each other. Right. So with a business partner dispute, it very well may be um, several two-hour sessions, depending on how complex the issues are. Right. Or we may talk about wrapping things up in one session. I don't people like I don't like people to be exhausted after two hours. So <laughs> two hours is a really good time limit for any kind of a mediation. Right.